No point in waiting. No point in waiting. All right. Yes. Peter M. in the chat. What is up? Best time of the week. Thanks, man. Yeah, I guess it is. You know, it is. It is. Where I'm free from the struggles of running my humble little pixel shop. How's it going on your end? I'm going to post this on YouTube right now. Hey. My wife was just here. She left, though. Uh, um, all right. I'm going to post the link on Twitter. We are going to get this going on the edge of my seat. I know. I kind of am. You know, actually, it's funny because... Uh, hold on. I'm putting my phone down and stuff. I, uh, I've done a lot of... Um, like public speaking kind of stuff, I guess you could say. And I used to give like small kind of, it doesn't really matter what I was doing, but um, it's funny because I feel like that nervous feeling before you talk to a lot of people, do something like this, it really never goes away, honestly. Um, so it's not that I'm nervous. I get like excited, I guess you could say. I, go, I guess you could say there's always this moment where like the nervousness breaks and then becomes excitement. And that's, uh, that's really fun. Waiting for this all week. Hell yeah, man. Me too. Okay, I'm going to post this on Twitter right now. I still haven't automated that. I probably never will. I kind of like the low-tech uh, the low tech thing. Okay, my arm is on the stream. That's okay. Uh, Boom. Posted. Never know how I should do it with the tweets. You know, I make the tweet in the morning and I'm like, hey, guess what? This is going down. Um, and then later, you know, should I bump that tweet? Do I retweet it? I try not to do too much like self-promotion on the timeline. I'm not wearing a shirt right now, but I actually am going to put on a shirt. I'm going to put on, whoa, with the double plug, with the double plug, the Sacred Heart shirt. Yeah. I really, uh, I'm not wearing it, so I can make that plug. I just happen to be wearing it. I own, like, all the shirts I sell in, like, multiple colors, so. <sighs> How are you guys doing? Um, I guess we'll just wait a minute. I always try and start this at 6.45, and I never get it together. Um, so let's we'll hang for a second, let some people get in, and then we'll get this going. I'm going to throw on a glove right now. I was bumping some music before, and I was really feeling the vibe on that, but... I guess I can't play like copyrighted music on a live stream, right? Can you? What's like the rule with that? I always see people playing music on their Twitch. Surely they don't, they don't have like the copyright for that shit. It's actually this band I like that I listen to uh, while I'm painting a lot called Guitar Vader. They're not very popular. And I was thinking, well, they're not very popular. I could just like probably contact them and ask them if I can just play their music, but there's no way to contact them. They're this like Japanese band. How are you guys doing? We're deep in quarantine. We're like a month in. Honestly, I'm, I'm over it. This week, I, I got over quarantine. I was like, yeah, I'm kind of just done. Um, like, I'm feeling the excitement and like the apocalyptica still. Don't get me wrong. But I'm also kind of like, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I was just in it for the memes. I'm kind of over it. What kind of music do you like? Let's talk about that for a second before we get this going. Um, well, the thing is, man, that... Uh... Oh, I... Uh... Oh, I'm oh, sorry. I'm keeping up with the chat while I'm talking. It's like rude. I feel like I'm like checking my phone like while I'm talking to people. Uh, with the sex comic on your Patreon. It's really great work. Yeah, man. Thanks. Dude, honestly, the sex comic is, uh, no pun intended, just taking like so much out of me. It's like a whole day of the week where I'm just like aggressively focusing on like that topic. For anyone that doesn't know what he's talking about, on my Patreon, I've been posting this comic I'm working on. It's going to be really long. I'm actually really amped to drop it probably next week. Um, it's like 24 pages now. It's probably going to be like 24 pages with like a title page. So it's almost like its own little comic. Um, but yeah, man, word, I'm glad you like it. Yeah, someone else hit me up on Twitter uh, in my messages and said that. I have to get back to them. Um, but yeah, the response has been pretty good so far. And it's only been on Patreon. Um, what kind of music do I like? I'll answer that question. Then we'll hit the intro. Then we'll get this going. Um, the thing is that the kind of music that I like has been really, really colored by the fact that I mostly listen to music while making art. So... For the last like a really, really long number of years, um, I've only really listened to music where I want to take that vibe and put it into my artwork. So that really changes things a lot. 
like sometimes one of my friends will show me like a really intense like metal band or something and i'll be like yeah this is really good but like i'm not going to listen to it while i'm working because you know for whatever reason i don't want to put that vibe into my art so i guess you could say i have a little bit of a different musical situation than most people um in the studio mostly i listen to like random weird classical music like loop music and people playing like old instruments and stuff and then i really like listening to japanese rock music and like japanese punk music um aside from the vibe that i really enjoy i think that the fact that i can't understand the lyrics is like a factor because then no matter what i'm working on like the lyrical content like doesn't affect it um this band guitar vader is really tight you guys should check it out there's one album they have where it has uh, like a blue bat on the front i forget what it's called um but that's really good some good shit do you like new job bass? Yeah, I used to listen to new job bass a lot. Um, I kind of fell out with the whole like beat music thing, but that's where I was for a while. Uh, I'm not very like tech inclined. Uh, it's funny because I moved out. I'm in like a very like rural environment now. Like I can hear cows on like my front porch sometimes. And sometimes when I brought like the electronic music vibe out here, it just was like not really, I don't know. I felt weird like bringing that energy out here. So that's also something that's uh, affected my musical situation. Okay, what time is it? 7.05, we gave them five minutes. Look at all these on-time people. We're not gonna wait for late people. We are gonna do this. Well, I hit the table and unfocused the camera. We are gonna do this right now. What is up, people? So, how's it going? How are you guys doing? I love that you're here. I love being here. Uh, as usual, as always, it's never going to change. Uh, intro music, Painted Worlds, check it out. I was listening to it on Spotify before I let my Spotify membership expire this week. I'm trying to save 10 bucks. But uh, check it out, Painted Worlds. That's the intro band. Painting show, Painted Worlds, really easy to remember. He didn't ask me to make the plug every time, but I like doing it now, Painted Worlds. Anyway, um, how are you guys doing, man? How are you guys doing? Uh, I didn't totally set up, so I'm gonna move some things around while I'm talking to you guys right now. Um, and let's just cut to the chase. Let's just cut right in. Do we need an intro, really? I'm doing good. Uh, I'm still quarantined. I have spent a heinous amount of money on groceries, but I'm all set to like not leave the house until the end of the month. Uh, doing artwork all the time. Uh, I've really transitioned fully into my role as like pixel shop operator. I made a joke about it once, but like, I never really played this game too much, but you know, in like Ocarina of Time or like some of those old like 3D platformer games, like you go into a shop and there's a guy just like waiting there and that's his whole life is just like sitting at this desk in this shop. It's kind of like what I've become at my desk here. I run like a little like pixel shop. That's how I think of it. And I love it, man. But that's like literally all I do now. Um, uh, I'm trying to figure out how to like integrate work in my life. Like when you work for yourself, um, like, do I take a day off? I don't know. I've kind of been taking one day off every like 10, 12 days or so, but I don't know. I usually just hit this wall and then I have to stop. And I feel like I shouldn't do that. This guy told me once, uh, I don't know if it was a guy or if I heard this somewhere, I have no idea where I heard this, but you can't go a hundred percent, a hundred percent of the time, but you can go 90%, 90% of the time. So Kind of try and keep that in mind, but I don't know. I kind of just work all the time and then burn myself out. So I'm kind of figuring that out. That's basically my life right now. Otherwise, let's jump into the art situation. I hope things are going well for you guys. I hope nothing's too crazy on your end. I feel like we're kind of at this point with the coronavirus thing where it's like everyone's kind of just waiting and it's like, did it happen? Are we 
coming down the hill now? Is the peak of the hill still like a few weeks away? Like no one can really tell. It's kind of the vibe I get. Just take Sundays, bro. Yeah, I took a Sunday off the other day. It, it was pretty tight. I mean, honestly, I should do that. Like it's literally in the Bible, right? Obviously. So how could that be wrong? Um, so I should do that. Anyway, so yeah, I feel like everyone's just kind of waiting on the coronavirus thing. I don't know. I hear crazy stuff from people in New York, but I don't know. I'm not going to go into it too much because I'm not, honestly, I'm just like not really keeping up with it that much. Maybe that's lame. But uh, anyway, I am kind of keeping up with it in a very specific way. I don't really want to talk about it. I could later. I have like all these Photoshop files where I'm like gathering all the data and stuff, like a little like data squirrel, like just hoarding things away. But you could say I have no like macro conclusion. I have no like you know, I haven't like analyzed anything from the data yet. It's kind of just there in my Photoshop files. Anyway, the reason we're here, not to talk about that. Everyone's talking about that. You can go get that anywhere you want. Is to look at some art stuff right now. And here's what I'm thinking, honestly. Um, we're just going to jump right into the creative situation. Uh, in case this is your first time watching this, I wing it every time. That's kind of the whole point. Uh, the show's like kind of about, I mean, it's about painting, but it's really more about like, the creative process, as pretentious as that sounds. So I don't never really have a plan going in. I gave this speech like a few times at the beginning, but you know, I could have some sketch and just be copying the sketch and it would come out like perfect. And then that's kind of cool, I guess. But I think it's more cool to just be like doing things on the fly. So here's what I'm thinking right now. Here's what I got in my brain right now. I got a few things going on. I don't know which path we're going to take, but we're going to choose one. Um, on the one hand, I had this idea for a picture and it's a totally different ball game if I have an idea already and then I'm working towards fulfilling that idea. Um, what I like to say is that it's like if, it, if the image exists in my brain, it already exists in some like virtual capacity. So uh, external of like, you know, forgetting like, you know, what's in my mind or anything like that. If I'm just sitting down and drawing something, it's totally different than if I'm drawing something and working off of like a sketch. Like today, for example, I was working on these sketches for someone and you know, I had this sketch and the sketch looked really good and I was putting it into Photoshop. I was drawing it into Photoshop. And it's a totally different mind space because I sat down to do the sketch and I was like, oh cool, like yeah, let's see what this looks like. Boom, you know, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm, my whole attention and focus is right here on manifesting the image. And it looked awesome, it came out really, really good. Um, so then I'm putting the sketch into Photoshop and then it's like I'm playing this different game where I'm worried about capturing what happened in the sketch and transferring that into this new thing I'm making. And when that happens, sometimes it comes out like kind of stale or kind of um, like you can feel that energy in the drawing. You can see that the person drawing it isn't just like confidently blazing through the forest. It's more like they're stepping along and like, oh, I want to make sure the apple looks good. I want to make sure it looks like the sketch and you're looking back and forth. Don't worry. It came out looking really great, obviously, because I did it. But I'm just painting the picture of that difference right there. And when I have an image in my brain and I'm trying to transfer that out, that, that uh, difference is there versus if I'm just winging it. So I had this idea for a picture. I was sitting in, my tr in the trunk of my car the other day. I have kind of like a truck car. I'm not a car person. I don't know what you call it if it's like in between a truck and a car. Um, but I was sitting in the trunk of it. It's like a big trunk. You know, you could like hang out in there. It's not like a car trunk. Just saying. Uh, I'm not like full hobo status yet. So I was sitting in the trunk of my car and there's these power lines and there were these birds around my house and there were these two birds sitting on the power lines. You could see the big full moon right like during the day, just right there, like right behind them. And there were these trees on the bottom. And I was like, oh, you know, it'd be kind of dope. Um, last time, I guess I could pull it up. I have it on my desk here. But last time I used this circle and I put this cardinal in the circle. So I was like, oh, it could be really hot if I had the circle with like the day sky. And then there's like night, like pouring out of like this day circle. And I could take the black ink and like paint it down and put the stars in. And then I was like, I don't know, I kind of already had that idea. You know, I kind of just thought about that and then, you know, I could just try and do that. But I don't know, on the other hand, the other day I was drawing and uh, I'm gonna get started in a second. I just like to paint the picture of like what I'm thinking before I like hop into it because I think it makes it more interesting. Because then when we see what happens, we kind of know like where I started. I was drawing and uh, I kind of jokingly titled, I always jokingly title the streams like different things, but I called this one the Ur vibe. And uh, if you've heard that term before, like the er language or things like that, like the er as a prefix means kind of like the ultimate like origin from which like other things came from. Um, like if you have an area and you're studying the linguistics there, there might be like an er language. Um, that's like this proto, proto is really the word I'm looking for. It's like proto language that everything came from. 
And I kind of do feel like I have this like er vibe about my work. I think all artists have some like dense core of style and symbols. And it's like this dense core from which everything radiates out from. And sometimes I'm working hard to make sure I don't fall into this trap of always doing things like that. Um, but sometimes it's also good to just lean into it and be like, yeah, this is my vibe. Like I, you know, well, you guys have seen my art. I'm sure you could pick out a few things that I do a lot. So I don't know. I'm kind of torn between just like going for it and doing something. Well, I mean, now that I'm saying this, I know what we're going to do. I think we're just going to go for it and see what happens. I don't really want to make an image that already like exists in my mind virtually. And if it comes out whack, if it goes by too fast, then I'll make that other day bird image thing. But let's just go for it. What I'm doing right now is I'm peeling back the wax paper. Cool. I'm um, gonna throw this away. And let's just go for it. Um, I'm kind of trying to decide. So I have this pretty big piece of paper. Uh, this is kind of interesting too. I never really talked about this, but obviously, welcome to most cultures. I was going to say Western culture, but most cultures where paper is a rectangle. Um, and actually my whole life, I've only a few times ever made a horizontal image. It's really just not how my brain works. I, I just feel so antithetical to the horizontal format. I really don't know why. Um, I always work vertically, but now I'm working on this horizontal screen. You know, you're watching me on the screen and the screen's horizontal. So making like a super tall vertical image isn't really the mood move, but I'm not gonna cave. I'm not gonna make something horizontal. So maybe we'll just roll in a circle. Um, I'm gonna grab my compass over here and I'm gonna grab a pen. And I kind of like the style we got up to last week where, um, so if you've been watching the show the whole time, in the beginning, uh, everything, the first few paintings I did, I'm looking for like a thick pen. I really don't have one over here. Let's see. Oh, I could use a marker. We could use a different color. Are we feeling that crazy right now? Yeah, I think we are. I think we are feeling that crazy. Here's orange. We use orange. Could use red. Yeah, let's use red. How thick is it though? I'm gonna use one of these microns. It's five. Five is good. Um, okay, so let's load this up. Yeah, so if you've been watching the whole time, uh, in the beginning, I, you know, it's kind of like everything was super like calculated. You guys have probably seen, I'm assuming if you're watching this, some of the images I make. And you can imagine that sitting me, sitting here and watching me make something where everything's super like measured and uh, calculated and patterny. A lot of my work is very like patterny. I always use the weapons, uh, the weapons analogy. You know, it's like, am I using a sniper rifle and painstakingly calculating every shot? That's kind of what we were doing in the first few episodes. And recently we've kind of drifted over more to like a flamethrower style thing. That's always the uh, the comparison that I use where, you know, you can't really control. Let's just see what happens. Do it fast and loose. And last time it went really well. We got that cardinal image. I could show it right now, but the thing is, I feel like if you see the image, you're not going to go like watch it because then the last episode, because then you know it's going to happen. So I'll post it eventually, but check it out if you uh, want to go see it. It came out really well. So we're gonna do something like that uh, where I don't really know what's gonna happen and we're just gonna go for it. Man, I love working on the white paper, so awesome. Oh yeah, that was the other thing. Hmm, well I already put this red circle down so we're just gonna roll with it but eventually maybe next episode or something like that. I, uh, maybe right now, I don't know. Let's see, I'll show you guys what I was thinking but we're probably gonna use the white paper. Um, I've also been kind of trying to focus on like uh, things that you can do, things that people can do like at home and stuff. And it's funny because whenever I work on cardboard, I feel like people that aren't artists are always like, oh, like cardboard, like, you know what, you didn't have any paper or something. But cardboard is a really, really awesome surface to work on. Actually, it's a really interesting visual texture. It has like nice like accidents and like lines and dots in it. It's not like perfect, you know, if you know what I mean. Um, like the paper you can see, which is like totally perfect. Uh, so I was thinking about painting onto the cardboard actually, but I don't know, maybe we'll do that next time. I don't want to add too many variables in right now, but if you're home and like drawing and stuff, like literally at my house, when I get Amazon boxes, if the cardboard is nice, I, I, I actually look at it to see if it's like nice looking cardboard. I'll just straight up like cut them up and I have like a whole pile of cardboard here and I have all these drawings on it. I actually really, really like working on it a lot. Um, so just throwing that out there. Even like famous artists, like impressionist artists, like Toulouse Lautrec, um, worked on cardboard for that exact reason, actually. All right, 
but that's not what we're doing today. We got the white going. We got the white paper going. And what I'm feeling right now is, uh, like I just said, I'm always trying to pull this thing where I'm trying to do something different, do the opposite of what I normally do. You know, if I if I have like a, a kind of like internally cliche inclination where I'm like, oh, I, I would put like a bone here or maybe put like a skull or like a guy's face or something. I got to do something different. That's always my mindset of like trying to change it up, trying to do something different, trying to change the flow up. But I think today, I don't know. I think today I'm just going to embrace it. I'm going to embrace the natural flow. We're just going to see what happens. Um, I've really been feeling a particular color scheme. And I think that uh, I think that's what we're going to lean into right now. That color scheme I've been feeling is red, black, and white. I don't think we're going to do straight red, black, and white. I do want to get some color in and stuff like that. But I've been really feeling that a lot recently. Oh, I'm going to bring the camera down just a little bit. So now that we know how big the circle is, I'm going to bring the camera down just a tiny bit so it's as big as possible on your screen because we're not going to come out of that circle. Okay, now let's see. I'm just going to make sure it's totally focused. Looks pretty focused, actually. All right, hold up. If you, uh, yeah, that Toulouse the Trek name drop, though. You know we're classy. You know it's classy in here. Um, okay, if you have eye doctor phobia, just look away for a second because I'm going to uh, tweak the focus on the camera and it's going to be like you're at the eye doctors right now. So just hold up. But I think we were good. I think it was set on 20. I feel like 20 is really good. I should bump it up a little bit just because we came closer. Okay, no, that's out of focus. Um, that looks perfect. I also turned up the bit rate. Someone last time told me that the earlier streams looked crisper. I don't know if that was true or if it was just that guy, but uh, I did turn up the bit rate. So now it's all the way up. So it should look great on your screen right now. And yeah, speaking of the red, white, and black thing. So there's this artist. Um, I used to be really into uh, like graffiti and street art and stuff like that. It's like a whole nother one of my past lives, you could say. And uh, this random artist from Brazil, I don't even remember his name right now, actually. Um, just a totally random dude. I was watching videos on YouTube and he said something really, really profound and awesome. You always get like really good tips from the most random places and random people. And he said, uh, red is the only color that doesn't upset the natural balance between black and white. And I thought that was so, such a, just a, such a well-worded, perfect observation. Um, black and white, obviously, you're familiar with that color scheme from piano keys and uh, everything in your life that's black and white. And I'm not talking about black, white, and gray, by the way. I'm talking about just black and white, just for the record. Um, but uh, yeah, so he said that red is the only color that doesn't upset the balance between black and white. And I really do feel that way. I don't know if I've ever talked about it on stream before, but if you imagine just black and white in your mind... If you cycle through the colors, like black, white, and green, black, white, and blue, black, white, and purple, none of them are as balanced. Oh, I told this story before? Damn. I'm kind of losing track of it, but it's a good little, like, prequel. Um, yeah, only black, white, and red keeps that, like, natural balance. So that's what we're going to start out with, and we're going to see where it goes. And I'm just going to jump in with this color, with the Cadmium Scarlet. So I say this every time, but this is the warmest color in my palette, this Cadmium Scarlet. It kind of functions for me as vermilion. Vermilion is like the real oil painting color, but uh, for some reason, Windsor and Newton calls it cadmium scarlet. Cool. And I got to pick a uh, weapon from the arsenal over here. It's really only between these two guys right here. So I have these two brushes. Um, let's start a little smaller. Let's start a little smaller this time. And... Uh, what I've been really feeling, oh wait, I gotta make sure I have paper towels. Fuck, I don't. Um, it's fine, I have a little bit of them over here. We'll throw it for now. Uh, and one thing I've really been feeling, honestly, has been the skull. I try and get away from it, but it always just calls me back. You know, it's funny, um, I feel like there is kind of like cliche things in every, uh, every way of working, whether it's art or music or writing or things like that. But sometimes it's really good to like analyze those cliche things and think about why they're cliche. I always give people to do illustration that advice. Like someone like Alphonse Mucha, 
is like, you know, if you were trying to seem cool around some people and you were like, oh, it's my favorite artist or something, they'd be like, oh, Alphonse Mucha, everyone likes that. Like, oh, such a such a cliche answer. But like, there's a reason that that's the case. So MC Escher is a perfect example of that. People like, they're like, oh yeah, MC Escher, like I, you know, but they've never like really looked into his stuff. So if you've never really looked into MC Escher stuff, I highly recommend it. Basically, my point is that sometimes things are cliche for a reason. And uh, let's just go for it. Let's just go for it. I'm going to paint in, do I want to start with the skull or do I want to start with someone's like face and put the skull in it? Let's just start with the skull. Who are we kidding? So I'm going to paint this in right here. Awesome. And I fucking love laying down paint on paper. It's literally the best thing in the entire world. All right, you can probably hear those birds outside my window. I actually found out they're not robins, so I've been lying to you guys for a really long time. I finally saw the bird that it was. Maybe I'll tell you guys, maybe I'll leave it as a mystery. And even how I paint this skull in, like even this little dent that I put in right here, kind of sets the stage for a lot of the style. Is it gonna be like faux realistic? Is it gonna be full on like illustrative? But I'm not even really worrying about that right now. I just kind of want to unleash the vibe. Sometimes what I go for when I'm like paint sketching or when I'm sketching like this is, um, you know, someone can just walk into a room and like pick up a guitar and like just unleash, just like unleash their energy. If anyone plays a musical instrument, you definitely know what I mean. You can just like go for it and like unleash your vibe on there. It's kind of what I try and do sometimes visually. Sometimes I'm not really worried about what it, what it conveys or anything. I just want to like, get that energy out. That's really how I feel right now. All right. So I have room for one more tooth over here, but first I'm going to come in and I'm gonna place this right here, get that little bump going in. And uh, you can actually feel, so if, you know, if you're not handling like toxic paint like I am, you can actually put your hand right on your eyebrow on the left side, and you can feel that bone that's like underneath your eyebrow. And if you just slide it back to the left, you can feel that like part that I just painted in. There's like a vertical part where it like breaks and becomes like the top part of your skull. I just like pointing things like that out. I did it last time too with a few other pieces because uh, you know, it's not like I'm copying some other drawing of a skull right now. I'm thinking about the things I know about how a skull is built and like transferring it into my style. Um, I don't know. Do I want to put the eyes in? I don't really know if I do right now. Um, I'm actually just going to keep it loose. So I want to keep a balance between drawing and painting when I'm doing stuff like this. I could just put in all the lines and then hmm, I should move the water so I'm not blocking this all the time. So I could just uh, be in line mode and just um, be putting the lines down the whole time, but I want to make sure I strike a balance between the drawing and the painting. So I'm going to kind of cloud it out a little bit over here. This I should have gotten the big brush for, but I didn't. I didn't do it. And I think part of me likes painting sort of like the inside of the body stuff, you know, like a skull and like organs and bones and stuff like that because kind of is like mystical in a weird way, in a very like atypical, almost like modern way. Let's get a little bit more of this red down over here. There's something that is like, sounds very cliche, but there's something that is like really weird about like being in like a body and, you know, inhabiting that like mortality and, you know, having like organs and shit, like what? And uh, I like getting at that a little bit with my, with my images. And let's just keep a little bit of the skeleton vibe going over here. So what I'm gonna do, what I'm kind of thinking is that I'm gonna paint in a few of the bones and I think it would be really hot in like the painting style if I got some of like the muscles and like the tendons like over the bones. I haven't actually done that in a while. I used to do that a lot, but I haven't done that in a while. I might like paint in the lungs. That could be really sick. And we'll see what this like figure's getting up to. I like putting in these bones, like the clavicle bones over here. So that's what I'm doing right now. If you're studying anatomy, these are really different in men and women. Uh, men's clavicle bones are different than women's. They slope at like a totally different angle. If you have a if you have a girlfriend or wife in your house, you can go check it out. Boom. Put these down. I knew someone that had like a phobia of these once. They said they like couldn't think about them. They always like thought about them breaking or something. It's kind of weird. All right. These are also good to put in in a drawing of a person. You can just put in like the pit of the neck and like the clavicle bones like showing through and it imparts like a very like particular flavor. 
Um, I'm gonna wait to put in the ribs. Normally the ribs is what I would put in next, but I'm gonna wait to put that in right now. Um, just because if I put in the lungs, I kind of want to have room to put the ribs over them. Of course, I could put the ribs in now and put the lungs behind them, but I'm kind of just winging it with you guys right now. Here's a really big deciding factor, and I had this today. I was sketching out some like, well, I guess I can say what the project is. I was sketching out some four horsemen drawings um, for this person. Someone commissioned me to make some like four uh, horsemen of the apocalypse drawings, and they look sick. They look really, really, really good. And I at first was experimenting with putting these like symbols on the face of the skull instead of putting in the skull face. And I really liked it a lot. I didn't actually end up going in that direction fully. If she's watching this, I'm gonna send you the sketches tomorrow. <laughs> but um, maybe I wanna do something like that, like put something atypical in the skull's face, but I don't really know what, let's see how it comes out. Um, first, what I am gonna put in above the skull is a crown and some laurels. We're gonna put that in for sure. All right, so I'm taking out the cadmium yellow. I use cadmium yellow a lot in place of gold. Um, you know, I could actually break out the gold paint right now. I haven't done that on stream yet at all. But let's wait, maybe I'll put in some gold highlights or something. I don't wanna get the gold in right off at this point because it doesn't function like the other paints. It's like literally metallic paint. It's like a metallic paint. So uh, if I put it in at this stage, it won't like interact with the other paints in like a normal way. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna throw down this crown. And like I mentioned at the beginning, sometimes I try and like stay away from Standard, standard is a really good word to use, standard symbols that I always use, but right now I kind of want to just go for it. And I love using the crown in my art, really, probably for so many reasons. I really like symbols that imply a whole like symbolic world and like symbolic framework. And the crown is definitely, I mean, it might even be the ultimate example of that. Um, you know, it implies like hierarchy, it implies that the thing wearing it is some kind of like, has some type of like primacy. Um, it implies like classicality, just making up words on the stream. It implies like classicalness. Uh, it implies monarchy and feudalism, and it's also just a cool vibe. And I'm probably gonna outline that somehow. Right now I'm kind of trying to decide if I wanna make it one of those crowns. There's two different kind of crowns that I use in my art. Hold on. The paper has some people's names on it, so I don't want to put it on the stream. Hold up one second. So there's two different kind of crowns that I like using. I think of them as male, female crowns, but actually I guess it's like not really the case, but that's how I think of it. Um, so there's this kind of crown, where normally there's some type of like, you know, some type of happenstance, some type of like design or like pattern at the bottom. But then basically the crown is like this, coming up from the top. Sometimes you get the crown in the back too, like it's a full circle, but you get this kind of crown, usually as gems or something. And then I guess because I associate it with Queen Victoria, I think of it as a female crown, that's how I use it in my art usually. Um, but you get this kind of crown where it comes up and then it comes down like this. And then normally you either get a cross or some kind of like diamond on top. Sometimes you actually get a combination of the two. Sometimes you get this kind of thing where at the bottom you have what I call the male crown. I guess it's not really a male crown, but I'm not gonna stop calling it now that now because it's been like 10 years. And then you have the other crown on top. And it's kind of a hot look. And you can get the cross up here. It's a really famous painting of Queen Victoria where this is like sitting in the frame. That's kind of where I like picked it up from. Um, so I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna put in that top up there. I might just leave it straight. It also, if I don't put in this like fancy like red top, I guess it's like velvet or something in real life. I actually don't know. It gives me a little room to like work up there. So I'm not gonna do that. Okay, I'm just mentioning it. All right. And I'm gonna paint in some lungs and that means we're gonna get a color that we don't normally use. Um, if you watch the early episodes, you already know this, but in my palette, I've really designed it and like carefully calibrated it to be like a classical painting palette. But then I've also strategically inserted some colors in there that are not part of a classical painting palette. And those are mostly the hot pinks. I have a lot of like super hot pinks and what I would call like sour magenta colors. They have like a sour kind of like acid like flavor to them. Visually, I don't eat the paints even though I have thought about it. And let's see, let's see which pink we want to go with right now. That means I use them way less, but they're pretty awesome. 
so you can see it's pretty good but I don't know let's see what the other one looks like so this is called opera pink you can see also that the sticker on the front has nothing to do with what the color looks like and this one's called rose Tyrian. it's a really dope color name let's see what that's looking like Ooh, it's actually way more magenta than I thought so we're gonna break out the opera pink and we're gonna get that going on the lungs right now I could use the red and keep it all one harmonious color family, but let's mix it up. So I'm gonna throw this pink down and I'm gonna mix in some white. And the cool thing about all the magenta colors and all the pinks is they, they look really different. Uh, I mean, sorry, they look almost the same, but once you add white to them, you really get to see how they're different. Um, adding white to colors will show you like the character of that color especially if they're like a deeper color. Um, it's like, it reveals like the nature of that color. And we got the palette knife. Cool. Cool, and let's just go for it here. Probably too much. I could have started with a little bit less, but it's okay. Boom. Let's see. It's probably gonna be a little too light. Hmm, I kind of like it, but let's just go for it now a little bit more. I don't want it to be that light on the page. Cool. And there's something about painting just like the human body and painting the face and painting like a figure and stuff like that. Um, in a way for me, it's almost like the modern like version of a landscape painting, like the way older painters would use like a generic landscape and use it kind of like to project their feelings and emotions and like maybe the state of their society onto. I kind of feel that way about like the archetypal figures that I use. I only mean archetypal in the sense that like you know, if you draw a human, but he doesn't have like particular features, like a particular jawline and a particular beard and all that stuff, the mind reads it as just, you know, a generic human. It could be anyone and you kind of read yourself into that figure. If you're familiar with like Keith Haring's drawings, Keith Haring used to draw these just kind of like super stick figure type images. And uh, they kind of have that effect to me where, you know, you see it and you're like, oh, that's me. Huh? He's just like me. I'm that little stick figure guy playing with the dog. Nice. So we're gonna paint in these lungs. And like I said, I might try and put in some muscles and tendons and stuff like that. So if I do, then it'll get a little, get a little loose in here. I'm gonna come down. I love the shape of the lungs. I guess that's kind of creepy, but it's really nice to like put in a picture. And we'll put something in there. I don't want to make it creepy like Corona style, but maybe we'll put something in there. It's like a lot of visual space, or we'll just load the ribs over it. Cool. Uh, right. And it's funny, I feel like for a long time in my life, I didn't actually really have like much like awareness of my body, <laughs> if that makes sense. I feel like, you know, I didn't really like think about it ever. I never like worked out or like was concerned about like any parts of it or anything. And then now that I'm just like a little bit older, I do uh, have some like awareness of it and all its parts. Like, do most people really know, like even like where all their organs are and what they do? Probably not. They know about the big ones, but okay, cool. Maybe I'm feeling like, you know, I'm feeling like what this will kind of be is it'll kind of be like an inverted like death image. You know, like death is always painted like, um, black like tarot card style like really creepy so maybe this will be like a positive like inversion of death maybe it'll be kind of like a it'll be like it'll be like a health thing that's what that's what this will be i think um that's another thing i like doing with symbols and symbolism is like inverting their normal uh what they normally mean you can do that also like it's a good like way to do like symbolic studies and stuff like that is just take a symbol and then you know say all right this normally means this but what if i flipped it on its head and did it like totally differently what if i painted it what if I painted it like meaning like the opposite of what it uh, typically means? So let's put in some laurels. Sometimes I make the laurels gold, but here I'm gonna make them green. I just want like a nice, like fresh green. So I'm gonna take this out right here. And uh, I know it is a little occult. It's a little too occult for me right now. I haven't like played in that world for a while, but that is also a thing within like tarot cards and doing tarot card stuff. If the card is upside down, it's like an inversion of itself. It kind of, not that it means the opposite of what it normally means, but it's like that symbol inverted. 
So even though I don't fuck with tarot cards anymore, I do uh, I do bring that kind of... There we go. Boom. Nice. It's going to look like horns, unfortunately. We'll see, though. Maybe I can make it not look like horns. I do bring that into like my symbolic framework, where a symbol could mean... A symbol could be like a positive embodiment of itself and it could just be like, you know, what it normally means or it could be like, uh, I guess you could say like a, I don't want to say negative. It could be like um, like an antithetical like embodiment of itself, almost like a poor embodiment of itself and it could kind of mean like the opposite of what it normally means. Boom. I guess, you know, like if you were doing augury, if you were some like pagan person doing like augury like way back in the day, you know, if you saw an eagle, that's normally like a positive symbol of like regality and like health of the emperor and the empire and stuff. But like, what if you saw like a wounded eagle? You know, then it means like the opposite of what it normally means. I guess that's kind of what I'm trying to get at. So maybe we'll do that right now with the skeleton. We'll kind of try and like invert what a skeleton like normally means. Sounds pretty dope, actually. See, this is why I don't plan it out. If I planned it out, would have been painted a bunch of birds on a freaking telephone wire right now and not that cool that looks dope and i'm gonna go back in and just fill in the leaves over here so if i do decide to go full like healing style full like health style for the image uh i don't know I, it's interesting because you know what's been coming up in my art recently is like the red cross like that medical symbol and it's interesting because i don't think most people realize that it's a cross i mean obviously like probably most of us do because we think of the cross like in that capacity but i don't think most people have thought about it when i was younger i heard i don't know if it's true that in muslim countries they have like the red crescent and in Israel, they had like the red star, like the red star of David. I don't know if that's true, but someone told me that when I was like super little. I never looked into it, but I was like, oh yeah, it's like a cross, like it's the red cross. Um, and I'm gonna outline the, uh, I'm looking for yellow ochre, it's over here, cool. I'm gonna, should I outline it? Yeah, I'm gonna outline it. I'm gonna outline the crown really quick. Let's get some yellow ochre down over here, boom. And I've also been thinking a lot about like Memento Mori images. I don't know if you guys know about those, but that's a pretty common uh, Christian art form. It's images like all about remembering that you'll die basically. So it's a bunch of like ephemeral things like a skull and like a dead flower and fruit, you know, things that are ephemeral basically, things that are locked into like a hyper temporal state. Um, Cause it's all about reminding you of your mortality. And I know before the quarantine is over, I'm going to do it. I want to do like a social distancing memento mori. I drew one, but it didn't really pop off like I wanted it to. But I feel like I can just picture it perfectly in my mind, like a still life set up with a phone. No one steal this idea. <laughs> I mean, you can if you want. Uh, like a still life set up with like a phone and like a computer and someone's like video conferencing, but it's done in a way that's not like really cheesy. I just know that could be like so dope and that it would pop off online. Hey, if anyone else is watching this also um, that does art, here's a really easy idea if you want to get like some shit popping off on like normie internet. You probably didn't, you didn't do this already, obviously, but you can go back and just lie about it if you feel comfortable lying. If anyone did something like that could be put under the headline of like, this artist did a self, one self portrait every day of quarantine and you had like a self portrait for every day of quarantine. Dude, normie internet loves that kind of shit. And that would definitely get up on like BuzzFeed or something like that. So if anyone's comfortable <clears throat> lying and wants to go back and uh, say that they've been doing that the entire time of quarantine, that's a free idea that'll get your shit popping off. People love that kind of thing. All right. And I'm gonna add some jewels in. I've also been, you know, yeah, I guess you could say I've been kind of reinvestigating all the symbols that I take for granted. And the jewels and, and gems are something that I really have been enjoying using a lot. I uh, made that picture of Augustine a while ago. It's definitely one of my best images I've made. Um, and it was based on this image of his coronation from, uh, hmm, the blue one's not exactly the same size as the red one. I might just roll with it. It was based on this image of his coronation um, that was painted in like the 1400s. And I noticed there was this glove that had these gems on it. And someone told me there were these gloves they used to wear that had these big red gems. 
and they were symbolic of Christ's passion. These like huge red gems, and it was like this sacred symbol that people would wear. Look how aesthetic the paper towel looks. Sorry, can I just show that really quick? All the colors. Um, and since then I've been using that symbol a lot. So I'll use like, um, someone will have their hand outstretched and I'll have like a gem in the hand and like subconsciously like to me at least it symbolizes like the wound in the hand. And I thought that was so interesting using a gem to represent that because it takes this like very like violent symbol of suffering and kind of just like reveals the uh, underlying mm, preciousness of it. Is that a weird thing to say? Uh, and I've been thinking a lot about that side of Christianity too. Like the, I guess I could say darker. It's darker in some way, not darker in another way. Um, side of the symbols. I'm actually working on an image of the Arma Christi right now, which are the tools in Christ's passion. And it looks awesome. And uh, it's just interesting using those symbols like the nails and the rooster and the ladder and all that stuff. Okay, that looks dope. That looks dope. Um, I want to get these ribs in here too. I want to just keep it moving down the body. So I'm going to paint in these white ribs really quick. Boom. And the big call is going to be what goes inside the skull. I can't put that off too long because like a Polaroid, this all has to develop together. And if I wait too long, then at the end, it'll be kind of like just like a cherry on top of a cake. It won't be like totally integrated into the picture. So I don't want to do that. Here, I'm just going to put in the space that I'm going to fill in in a second with the ribs. So I'm just going to give myself a little, a little room there. And in a minute, I'm going to put in these tendons like in the neck with this dark red color. I think it's going to be really legit. But I'm kind of trying to decide what I'm going to put on the face. Could put an alchemical symbol on there. Honestly, you can hear the tone of my voice. To me, I'm kind of like, oh, cool, Owen. You put a fucking esoteric symbol. Wow, you're so deep, bro. So I don't really want to do that, honestly. It feels like pulling like a little bit of a cheap trick. I could do it, but I don't know. I don't know. Boom. I could put the red cross, like a medical symbol, but then we're kind of in like a different territory. I kind of want to put like an animal in there, honestly. That'd be pretty dope. Do something a little like unexpected. Perfect. And I'm gonna come in and put like a fatter, cold yellow halo around the skull right now. So the cadmium yellow is a warm yellow. Hmm, got a little paint on my computer, but it's not a big deal. Good thing this paint is water soluble. Cyclops skull face. Yeah, I could do that. I could do that. Um, okay, so the crown was this very warm yellow you can see obviously maybe it's not obvious I'm gonna put in this colder yellow halo this is called lemon yellow and I'm just gonna drop this in the back and I really want it to be like super like watered down and loose honestly so let's see let's see how good I can get that maybe I'll just put it in like that yeah there we go cool so yeah, I think what I'm going for here is kind of like skeleton as like a life symbol. And we'll see how far we can get with that. Maybe like the redemptive, whew, got a fucking hair in here. Really shouldn't care because no one can see it. Maybe like kind of like the redemptive like power of it, the redemptive power of like, I don't know. I don't want to say like contemplating death. It sounds kind of, kind of extreme. And this yellow is so good, oh, so good. Man, seriously, nothing beats just laying down like fat areas of color. Nothing beats it. I could put a cardinal on the face. That would be sick. I don't know. Nothing. You know, normally, normally as I as I go through my little like symbolic vocabulary, something jumps out. It's not really happening right now. There we go. Boom. Get that in there. And then I want to just maybe I'll just take the straight up water and just drag it up a little bit yeah that looks perfect cool yeah that's exactly what I wanted just a little I'm actually gonna dry that off a little bit cool 
I see people suggesting stuff in the chat. Hey, yo, you know what we should do one time? I should just purely take people's suggestions from the chat. Like not right now, but one time, that would be really cool. Like I'll do a whole picture, but I'll just take directions on symbols from the chat. That would actually be sick. I should definitely do that. And uh, I'm not complaining. I actually, I actually like how it turned out. It's kind of what I was going for, but I just want to make sure that like halo shape like stays in a little bit. So I'm just going to lightly throw down that cadmium yellow and kind of paint it in a little bit here. And since I'm trying to keep it interesting, keep it fresh, keep it bumping up, I'm going to actually add a little bit of orange even in the bottom down here. Yeah, there we go. Nice. I got the paint like bleeding out. That's great. Yeah, perfect. Exactly what I wanted. A little bit of chaos in there. Get us going. Get us going down the chaos road. Yeah, if you wanted to, I see you guys talking to me and to each other. If you want to do it, you have to do it like Peter M did, where you put Atto and Cyclops. Otherwise, I can't read it all because then I'm like not paying attention. Um, Phoenix. Phoenix. Oh, okay, yo, Phoenix would be tight, but I don't know if I could fit. I mean, I, I could. I could do it. I could do it. I could fit a phoenix in here, but I want something like a little bit bolder than that, honestly. Um, so let's see. Let's see what happens. I'm going to outline the ribs, and then I'll make a call. Man, it's hot. Oh, it's really hot in my room right now. I kind of want to take my shirt off, but then I have to take the gloves off, so I'm just not going to do it. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to paint in the ribs right here. And I don't know, something about the ribs like painted in, I just really like it. Really couldn't even say why. I kind of want to put a rabbit on the face. I've been thinking about rabbits in art a lot recently. It's kind of like an atypical symbol. It's not very biblical. I like that they represent like alertness in a way um, because they have the huge ears. And all they can do, their only like natural defense is like <laughs> being alert. It's kind of like an interesting symbol. Yo, actually, you know what I'm gonna do? Ugh, I just got it. I'm gonna put a rabbit on the face and I'm gonna paint like a big fox down on the bottom. That's gonna be sick. And it's gonna go awesome with the red. It's definitely what I'm gonna happen, what I'm gonna do right now. Cut diamond. Yeah, diamond is tight. I like using the actual like rotated square diamond shape, but I never really use the like emoji style cut diamond only because sometimes it implies it. Sometimes it brings like a very like tattoo quality. I don't know if that's the one you meant, but um, I could put a gem. A gem actually would be dope, but I had the rabbit fox idea just now, so I'm gonna roll with that. Um, boom, here we go. So I'm putting in more of the ribs. Yeah, that looks dope. Got some behind, some in front. Perfect. And perfect. I mean, yeah, normally I talk about what I'm reading. I've been reading this book by John Paul II. It's really good, but honestly, I've just been focused on working. Um, I have this huge book by St. Augustine. Well, it's not just a book. It's called City of God. And I have this big book of writing by Thomas Aquinas, but I've just been working like so hard. And sometimes I feel like when I hit like a huge book, it really... Um, takes my head out of like the office. It takes me out of like working. So I need to be reading something, but I kind of just haven't been honestly. Um, I really do want to dive into that stuff. The book by John Paul II is really good though, actually. It's pretty cool because it's called, uh, what's it called? It's called Crossing the Threshold of Hope. And uh, basically the way the book is set up is that um, John Paul II is like noteworthy for a variety of reasons, but... Um, he kind of was one of the first like modern media popes, I guess you could say, like, you know, with the internet and, and doing live interviews on the radio and live TV interviews and stuff. I don't know if he was the first one to do all that stuff, but he did a lot of those firsts, actually. So he was scheduled to do, I think it was actually the first time a pope was going to give a live interview on TV where he didn't know the questions beforehand or something, like where he was really just going to go like off the cuff. And he was going to do it with this Italian journalist that actually was Catholic himself. So, you know, at least you have kind of like a little bit of a sympathetic uh, interviewer, you could say. And at the last minute, it fell through and they didn't do it. But somehow John Paul II got the questions 
and wrote out like hardcore answers to all the questions and sent it to the journalist. And he made it this book. The book's called uh, Crossing the Threshold of Hope. So it's pretty cool. I'm not that far into it right now. Um, But like even just in the first few chapters, it's really cool because it's like whatever you think of the Pope, you know, it's cool questions to ask him like, so like, you know, uh, how do you like pray like as the Pope? Like you have all this like weight on your shoulders and asking him like just these really like frank questions. Like what would you say to someone about like, you know, why people should even like believe in God and like all this stuff. And it's really cool. Uh, I'm kind of reading it because I'm looking for fucking Elizabeth and Crimson. Oh, it's right here. Um, it's pretty cool because I'm reading it. Well, I'll go into why I'm reading it in a second, but a little painting note right now. So I want to throw down some like tendons and muscles and like tendony things. Oh, I should put in the arms, I guess, before I really do that. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to put in the arms and then I'm going to throw in some like tendons and muscles and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, I'm reading it because, you know, if you're, I mean, come on, you hang out online with me, you, you must know about it. Um, within certain like uh, groups of like Catholics, I guess you could say, some of the modern popes are slightly controversial, I guess you could say. Okay, how do I want to put the arms in? Because I have all this space over here. So this is what I'm thinking right now. I have a lot of space over here. I could put the arms, I could just put the arm muscle, the arm bones down, and then they're going out of the frame. I think that would be pretty nice. I could have them coming up. And then I could have like the hands and like the skeleton hands. That does look like pretty hot actually. <sighs> Gotta make a call. Um, I'm worried that if I put them out of the frame that it'll look like kind of a cop out. Like his arms will just be like poking out of the frame and I'm kind of worried it'll, it'll look whack honestly. So I'm not gonna do that. Um, I'm going to put them down and up. Do I really wanna put the hands in though? Let's just do it. Let's just do it. So I'm just gonna Put the arm coming down like this. Yeah, that looks dope. Okay, and we're about to cross over an hour already, actually. It's pretty crazy. Um, This is usually where things start getting interesting. (laughs) So if anyone wants to ask me something, you can start asking me stuff. I don't know if I'm going to actually, like, full-on pause because I kind of want to just keep it going, but we'll see. I'll start taking questions in a minute. Okay, here's the call though. Ugh, do I want it coming? If I have them coming out of the frame, I can get two symbols up here. I think that's the move. I think that's the move. I'm kind of worried that the skeleton hand is going to look too tight. I don't want this to be like a tight painting. Um, so I'm just going to have it. And I'm also not going to paint the two arm bones. I'm just going to paint it like as one arm bone. Okay, cool. So yeah, I'm reading that book because some of the modern popes are a little like controversial, I guess you could say, in terms of like what they've said about like specific issues. So I've heard so much about John Paul II. And I kind of just wanted to hear him say some stuff in his own words. So that's why I'm reading the book. Yeah, that was a good call. That looks really dope. Okay, so I'll paint in some of these tendons and uh, take some questions and shit. What I'm thinking right now for these tendons is I always like bringing up things that are about how... Um, you're limited by like tools and materials you have. So I really want to lay down a lizard and crimson using like a really, really dark red would be perfect. But the thing is, if you've been paying attention for the last few weeks, uh, a lizard and crimson is a really clear color. It's a really transparent color. And I'm worried if I lay it down over this other stuff, it'll look kind of like cheap. Cadmium red is, this is cadmium red medium. It means That means it's darker. Cadmium red light would be lighter. Cadmium red medium is darker than light. Uh, so I'm going to mix in a little bit of the alizarin crimson with the cadmium red. You know, actually it's pretty dark. It's pretty dark, but let's not take any chances. Jesus style hands down pose. Yeah. One hand up behind the head. That would be sick. Uh, that would be sick, but I'm not going to take it there right now. Um, symbolic reversal of burning heart symbolizing faith to the burning lungs. Yeah, that's, that's really tight actually. Um, okay. Where's my trowel? Boom. Can you recommend some Japanese artists I can look into and find prints to hang in my room? What's up, Joe? Yeah, I definitely can, man. I'll take a little detour right now while I mix this color up. Yeah, Japanese art is sick. I highly recommend looking at it. Um, There's always been like a weird kinship between Western artists and Japanese artists. I don't know if most people know this, but when Western painters first started seeing Japanese art, it's around like Van Gogh's time. They loved it. They went nuts. And the same thing happened in reverse too. When Japanese artists first started seeing Western painting, they loved it. It's like we're bros. It's like we're bros with the Japanese. We have like a little kinship going on. 
Um, and of course I endorse that because I also really like Japanese music. Mostly, uh, most people on Twitter like anime. Uh, not that that's fully representative of Japanese culture, but is it a full coincidence either? No, in my opinion. Um, yeah, I mentioned before, usually the most like cliche obvious ones are cliche for a reason. Hokusai. Um, if you just guess how these are spelled, you'll get close enough for Twitter. Uh, I mean for Google. Um, Hokusai is the guy that made the... Uh, Waves Mount Fuji image that's like the most famous Japanese art image of all time. Hokusai is really, really, really good. Um, really worth checking out. He has a Phoenix image that I love, but all his stuff is really good. Um, lesser well known, there's a guy named Hiroshige. Hiroshige, I'm probably not saying it correctly in Japanese, but that's how it looks to an English speaker. Um, Hiroshige is really, really, really good. He's probably like my favorite Japanese artist. Um, so I'd recommend checking out Hiroshige. You're not really going to go wrong with that. You can find some cool shit there. Um, specific stuff, there's a type of woodblock print called Ukiyo-A, is that how it is? U-K-Y, U-K-I-Y-O hyphen E, that's like floating world images, um, floating world is in like the pleasure and, you know, upper class life of Japan, but, uh, if you start with Hiroshige and Hokusai, yeah, you're not gonna go wrong there. Um, there's a waterfall image by one of those guys that I really like a lot, so check that out. Um... Okay, hold on. Uh, I'm gonna start painting these muscles and I'll take some more questions. What's the next question? After looking into orthodox iconography, have you considered using gold or silver gilding as a medium in your art? Yo, you guys are lining up the questions perfectly. Um, okay, I'm just gonna paint in. So like, uh, I can't touch my neck right now because my hands are covered in like these chemicals. But if you touch your neck, there's a really, really, really big tendon going from the bottom of your ear down to the pit of your neck. The pit of your neck is, is the front of your neck where you can feel those two bumps down at the base of your neck. Um, it's actually where your two clavicle bones come to like the surface right there. And there's this really big tendon. You can actually feel it, especially if you like flex your head around and like move your head around and kind of like flex the muscles in your neck. You can feel this really big tendon coming from your ears down. That's what I'm gonna paint right now. I wanna paint that the tendon and connecting these muscles. Um, yeah, so I really do like using uh, gold and silver in my art, usually I just use gold, honestly, I never really use silver. There's not as much of a classical precedent for that, in my opinion. Um, I love doing it, it changes up the vibe a lot, so I don't really do it too often. But um, yeah, for sure, I used to do that a lot. Uh, it gives it a very, like like you just said, a very icony kind of like, if you're doing Western Europe style, Renaissance, pre-Renaissance, Byzantine feel. Uh, I'm also gonna paint like a tendon coming around this way. So I like to kind of wrap the tendons around the bones. Kind of like you're wrapping the muscles like around the bones. Um, it almost gives it kind of like a vegetal quality. Really like that term. So I'm gonna come down here and just, there we go, boom. That's perfect, that looks sick. Here, uh, I do know the muscles in the arm and stuff, but I'm not gonna actually like paint in the actual muscles themselves. I'm just kind of like hinting at them. Like I am gonna put in a muscle that's kind of like the deltoid up here, just coming down. Someone asked me about studying anatomy and the best way to do it is work out while studying anatomy because then you actually see the muscles that you're using. But I really just wanna get like the, the ocular, the visual feeling of like muscle fibers and muscle tendons and stuff like that. There we go, that's good. Boom. It's like there's like the layers underneath the skin, you know, it's kind of like what I'm going for right now is the feeling of like, if you looked at it, you would like kind of feel like those layers like in your body. I guess that's creepy, but whatever. I don't really give a shit. And I don't want to put too many in with the ribs. People don't really like use the muscles near their ribs. So I'm just going to put in like little bits. Just get that, I just want to get the color in so it all like visually coheses. Yeah, that looks sick. That looks really good. Cool. Yeah, someone said the clearness might help show the bones underneath. Yeah, that's true. That's true, but I wanna make sure everything looks bold. I'm going for bold. Um, so that's why I wanted to make sure it was dark enough. Okay, and it's time to start putting it off. I'm gonna paint the rabbit. I could paint in a black rabbit. Black would look really sick. Uh, I'm kinda worried it would be too much, too jarring. But at the same time, that's why we're here, is to be jarring, so uh, I'm gonna use black. I could use indigo, I could mix up a black, but I'm just gonna use straight black right now. Is this the first time I'm using black paint on the stream? I don't think so. Ugh, get the glue out, fucking glue. There we go. You know, it's funny because I, uh... 
I used to live with this girl. We weren't like dating or anything, but I lived with this girl. Uh, it was in, I don't want to say too much about where it was. It was in a city in Italy, let's say. Let's say it was in Italy. And she was an artist also. It was, it was with a few people. It wasn't just me and like some random girl. But, uh, oh man, so much glue came out in this paint. Can you guys see it? It's fucking it's annoying as shit. I want to make sure the rabbit is crisp, so I got to get the, uh, just the paint out. So yeah, I lived with this girl, and she was an artist also. And then for this art project she had, she, uh, she would definitely know I'm talking about her if she was listening to this. But I guess she would have recognized my voice already. Uh, I came home. And there was this cutout. It was big. It was like bigger than life size. Cut out like black cardboard rabbit just sitting on the table. And it was such a striking image. Just this big black rabbit. And the silhouette was like so perfect. And that just always stuck with me for some reason. I was just coming home and just like encountering this thing in like such an atypical space. And I was like, oh yeah, rabbits are kind of a dope symbol. I could downgrade to a smaller brush. I kind of feel like bitch dad is doing that though, honestly. Um, maybe I should though. Maybe I should. Let's see. Let's experiment with using the bigger brushes and the smaller brushes together. So I got this one. It's significantly smaller as you can see. So I'm going to paint in this black rabbit. I like using black animals sometimes because again, to me, it's like a little subversive where, uh, hold up. I just want to make sure I don't fuck this up. So I'm just going to paint in the little head. kind of hard to fuck up the rabbit. I mean, it's basically just a lump with like two sticks coming out of its head. So I just want to make sure. I like using black animals sometimes because to me, it's like a little subversive. Look, I could totally change gears and make that the eye of the skull, but I'm not going to. Um, because we think of black animals as like representing evil, but actually, you know, black animals are just a part of nature. They're part of like God's creation. So they're not actually evil. So in a way, sometimes like the black animals signify the way we kind of like project and like allow these like dark forces to like appear to manifest in places where they aren't. You know, a black rabbit is like the same as a white rabbit, really. Um, I mentioned this once about the full moon, I think, but the full moon's classically been seen as like an evil symbol. But there's some saint or some monk who said, you know, actually what the devil does is the devil just does bad things when there's a full moon. He like intentionally coordinates it to pervert God's creation. So people will start to think that this nice thing that God made that actually has nothing wrong with it, which is the moon, has this like evil and like dark aspect to it. I thought that was a really fucking cool explanation. Something I keep in mind when I see animals that like, you know, in pagan times or like earlier times would have been associated with evil. I'm like, you know, I'm not gonna let the devil like trick me and pervert this like aspect of creation that actually has nothing wrong with it. So that's why we're using the black rabbit right now. I'm gonna give it big ears. I like to give them super big ears. Like, why not? If you're gonna go for it, you might as well go for it. Boom. Perfect. Yeah, that was a really good call. Could have made them a little smaller, but whatever. Perfect. And I could even paint a symbol in the rabbit. Sometimes if I'm getting really like freaky mystical vibe, I put like an eye on the body, but I'm not gonna do that right now. But that would be sick. Nice. Wow, that looks dope. Okay. Uh, what was the next question? Do you remember the first time you seriously considered Christianity? Yeah, I've kind of told that story a bunch of times. Or I've kind of like hinted at it. I should just do one stream where I just full on just go into the whole like why and how I became Christian thing. And then I just could direct people there. Um... I don't know if I'm going to go into it right now. Basically, I fell out with all the other like belief systems I was a part of and hit a wall in terms of like drinking and smoking weed all the time and just kind of like being a piece of shit. And uh, I had also like previously reasoned myself to a conclusion that was like very close to Christianity. And uh, that's why. Maybe I'll go into that in a second. Um, that's that's the most interesting part, I guess. Um, it's, it's more like philosophical than I just made it sound, but I'm kind of just giving you like the 15 second version. Um, hitting a wall in like my real life was kind of the catalyst to manifest all these like philosophical and theological conclusions I had already come to, but I wasn't actualizing because it's nice just sitting around smoking weed and like being kind of nihilistic, I guess. Um, okay, uh, so the bottom here. So I really want to get this fox in the bottom because the fox and the rabbit, that's really dope symbolism together. Um, I'm wondering if I'm going to pull up a picture of a fox. I don't really want to be like looking at a reference 
So I'm not going to do that. But I do just want to look at one really quick. Maybe I'll take another question while I'm going to pull it up. My computer pulled up Fox News instead of like an actual Fox. All right, cool. Um, let's see. Have you read? Uh, have you read any Charles Williams? He's a good friend with Tolkien and C.S. Lewis, and seems really your vibe. Nah, man. But I really need to check those guys out. I just haven't like bit the bullet, so to speak, and like read those huge books. Honestly, I wish I read them when I was younger. Um, it's funny because C.S. Lewis had a huge impact on me via um, mere Christianity. Even when I was, you know, younger and I had never thought about Christianity, mere Christianity was a book that like really stuck with me. And when I was really little, I started reading Chronicles of Narnia, but I was like too young. Like I didn't understand it, I guess. But all the images, so what I'm doing right now, just so you guys don't think I'm like just killing time here, I am making sure I get all the black off this brush because I want to lay down the bright colors of the fox. And if there's any uh, black on the brush, it'll just totally like, um, it'll totally mute the bright red color that I'm going for. So that's why you're going to hear this like clinking and you're probably going to see me just like drying off the brush for the next like 30 seconds. Um, so yeah, I really do want to hit the C.S. Lewis stuff, but I've never done it, but it's funny. Yeah. Like I said, because all the images from the book really stuck with me. Like there's a part in the first Chronicles of Narnia book where, um, they go to this room and there's like some cord or something they can pull. And there's these statues in the room and there's a sign that basically says, you know, you could pull this cord or you could leave, but then for the rest of your life, you're going to wonder what would have happened if you pulled the cord and this little boy and girl get in an argument. And he's like, well, I'm not leaving without pulling the cord. Like, I'm not going to live the rest of my life wondering what would happen. And I was really little. Like I said, I was too little to understand the book. But that really stuck with me. I was like, wow, like, oh, is he really going to, like, not pull it and then wonder the rest of his life? Like, what would have happened? Uh, but, yeah, I really wish I read those books when I was younger. I'm very into, and I feel like it's going to be the next, like, big chapter I open. I have, like, a bunch of, like, frankly, like, darker Christian imagery that I'm working on right now. Of, like, the Arma Christi, like, the tools I mentioned. And... Some like Book of Job stuff that I haven't shown anyone yet. Uh, just like little sketches. And I think I'm going to hit like the, a few like dark, death, biblical overlapping things. And kind of think people don't really wouldn't really expect it from me. It's not why I'm doing it, but that's just a bonus for it. So I think I'm going to hit all that stuff. And then I want to open the folder of um, where Christianity meets like esoteric lore and myths and things like that. For me, it doesn't really manifest in the uh, C.S. Lewis and Tolkien stuff. I mean, I guess it could. That's just not the world that I inhabit. Uh, for me, it's Arthurian legends. The Arthurian legends are a really cool place where Christianity meets um, myth and lore and stuff like that. That's something I'm going to unpack soon. I have a book, actually. I want more people to read it, so maybe I'll grab it from the shelf in a second. Actually, I'm going to grab it right now. Hold on a second. I gotta stretch my legs anyway. Let's grab the book. Let's see. Is it where I thought it was? Oh, man. It should be. Yeah, it's so I haven't finished this book yet, but this is a really cool book on it. If you want to check it out, um, it's called The Grail uh, from Celtic Myth to Christian Symbol. And it's really good. Uh, you can see I got some stuff bookmarked. I'm further in it than this, but I bookmarked some stuff in there. And uh, I think it's really good for hitting that bard, Arthurian legend, sword of de spear of destiny kind of vibe. So that's what I got cooking on the back burner right now. Okay, so I want to paint in this fox. And, you know, we do it live on the stream. Sometimes things don't turn out well. So I'm just going to go for it. It might not turn out perfectly, but that's why we're here. I can just pull a Bob Ross. It's going to be happy, happy little accidents. Just make a little mistake. Yeah. And I kind of want to give myself some looseness so that if it doesn't look good, I can kind of like fudge it a little bit. Um, but I'm just going to put it in. I'm just going to put in the nose over here. Yeah, that's kind of how a fox's face is. Comes up a little bit. I usually try and land in this like medieval space when I paint in animals. Um, if you look at a lot of medieval art, sometimes you can see that they, they definitely had no idea what animals looked like. So I kind of try and land in this like, I don't want to say naive space and like totally let myself off the hook, but try and land in this space where it's not like supposed to look exactly like the animal. It's more like a symbolic like representation of it. I got to put in the black nose on the fox, but we'll go back. We'll go back for that. Usually there's some like white underneath, so I'm gonna leave that there and I'm gonna start mixing in some orange on the back end. I don't wanna go full orange, but off camera right now, I'm mixing in some cadmium orange into the vermilion that I got going on. And we'll see if you can even see that change. There we go. I wanna get like a little arch in the fox's back, like he's like almost like kind of like hunting a little bit. We'll get that first haunch. 
Do kind of the second haunch. Damn, that looks really good actually. Nice. And then the fox's tail is always like kind of weird. It comes, it comes like darker. It's not the same color as the rest of the body. In true to medieval form, I'm not gonna look it up right now. I'm just gonna go for what I'm imagining it as in my head. Whoa, so many messages on the screen. Have I heard of the uh, Book of the New Sun? That sounds really familiar, but no, I have not. And the fox's tail is kind of like a, it's kind of like a tube actually. It's very like uh, cylindrical, but I'm gonna paint it in a little bit different than that. I'm just gonna paint it in how I want to, but I like to give it a nice big tail. Yeah, that looks dope. Nice. Nice. That's perfect. And I'm going to add a little bit of darkness right at the front there where the tail meets the body. Yeah. Hell yeah. That's perfect. Um, and the fox's paws are also like a little bit of a different color, right? They kind of have like, they're like darker. I feel like I should get some brown in there. Uh, I don't want to throw black in. I could throw some black in, but instead I'm going to use burnt umber. Burnt umber is like a really muted, uh, almost like a red brown. I feel like that's the color we should use. So I'm going to drop that in right there. People ask me about specific people. No, I don't know who that is either. Uh, Van Gogh sure made copies of Hiroshige's stuff. Yeah, he did, dude. Um, there's some paintings where he has some super like Japanese looking trees. It's really awesome. Um, the kinship between Japanese artists and Western artists is very underplayed. Most people don't. I'm just going to try and, like I said, I don't want it to look like I'm trying to make it look exactly how a fox really looks. I kind of just want it to be like very loose and painterly. So I'm just going to get like that energy in there. Yeah, it's pretty good. And I want the back legs too. Could have come down a little bit more with the red. Maybe I will. And then I want that back leg. Yeah, that's perfect. When you paint in four-legged animals, sometimes their legs kind of look like fucked up together. You kind of have to like really commit. If you look, if you if you go in unconfident, then the legs just look like a kind of like jellyfish flailing mess. You have to really like commit and just uh, imagine how the joints are and just go for it. I'm gonna come back in and put this down here. It's a little, little transparent, but it's okay. And then I want to nail this front part. If I can just get that a little. Kind of just like that, but that's still too much. Um, we'll take that. We'll take that. Someone asked me if I looked into say if I if I ignore your question, it's probably because you asked about a specific person and I don't know them. I'm not like specifically ignoring people, but that's why. So no, I don't know who a bunch of those people are, unfortunately. Um, or I, or the books that you're mentioning, but I will make note of it and check it out later. Okay, let's see. I just want to get that pale red. Yeah, there we go. That's perfect. And I'm not going to put an eye on it. Yo, that looks awesome, actually. I love how that came out. Uh, I'm not going to put an eye on either of these animals. I've kind of mentioned it before, but yeah, that looks sick. I'm looking at it on my computer screen. It almost looks even better on the computer screen right now. Um, I'm not going to put an eye in. When you put an eye in, it becomes kind of like... Uh, a living, like I painted a fox, whereas if I don't put anything in, then it's just like a, a symbol of a fox. So I don't want to put in the, uh, I don't want to put in the eye. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. Okay. I'm kind of going to ignore questions for a minute just so I can dig in and like start really digging in here. Let's see anything else I should hit though. We are looking at the questions. Got to read space trilogy. Yeah. I got to read those books. Those, those have been floating around in my mind for a while. You make the middle jewel darker. It looks the same as the right one. It's messing with me. Yeah, I knew the red and orange. That's funny you said that. I knew the red and the orange uh, were going to be too similar. Maybe I'll go back and do that. Okay, let's dig in. Let's dig in here. Um, in case you just came in, I mentioned just manifesting like the Ur style, like just manifesting, you know, the uh, not trying to do something too different, just going with like the natural flow of things. So that's what I'm doing right now. And I'm gonna throw in some trees on the side. I think that's gonna be really chill. Uh, I took out this raw umber color, but I really don't like how that color looks, so I'm not gonna use it. Um, I'm gonna use instead, oh, I could use yellow ochre. That's looking fresh right now. Where's the yellow ochre? Yellow ochre is a really great color. You can use this to mute any other color. So if you're ever painting and your colors are like too bright, that never happens to me because I always want the maximum level of brightness. You can. Uh, you can just use that. 
So I'm going to throw in these tree trunks. I don't know. Is this really the color I want, though? I really can't tell. I'm having color doubt right now. I think this is good. I'm mixing paint with my brushes. I told you guys not to do that. You shouldn't do it. But I'm doing it right now. So do as I say, not as I do. Okay, so I'm going to throw down some trees. Kind of have a few options with the trees. Um, obviously, palm trees don't really fit here. I mean, they fit anywhere, but that's really not the vibe that we're cooking with right now. Um, I use cypress trees a lot. Cypress trees are kind of symbolic of death. Um, they said that if you cut one down, it would never grow back. I always said, isn't that the case with like most trees though? But that's the, that's the Renaissance symbology of the cypress tree. So I'm not gonna use that because um, we're trying to go for the kind of inversion of the uh, death symbolism like we talked about before. So I'm just going to paint in these nice fat trunks and we're just going to paint in some like fecund trees. Fecund is one of my favorite words. So we're going to paint in some fecund trees. I'll probably put oranges on them. This is looking dope. Okay, so I'm going to, I want to start getting a little bit looser. I want to start getting a little bit, uh, a little bit more of a loose energy going on. So I'm going to switch to a bigger brush, changing weapons right here. And let's just do it. I want to get some sap green. Sap green is the nice, like, warm yellow green that I have. Yo, I have this color here called olive green, and I've actually never used this. Let's see uh, what the deal with that is. At the time that I was ordering my paints, uh, it was a long time ago. Let's see, do we want to use this olive green? Let's do a little detour, a little detour over here. Um, at the time when I was ordering my paints, hmm, I don't know. I want to try and see if I can see the, the, the type of color it is. Um, I don't know if I want to use that. It almost is the exact like yellowy green that I'm going for. You can see how different it is from the sap green. Watch, like if I do this, you can see how different they are. Hmm. I think that this is more muted than what I want. So I'm actually going to use the sap green, but I tried. When I ordered my paints, there was like a shortage of like the paint that I use normally. So... I had to order this big set of paint and it had all these colors that I would never normally use. So I have a bunch of colors like that that I wouldn't normally buy. And let's just go for it. I want to get like big, fat, chunky, loose tree energy going on over here. Let's just paint them in. Yeah, fuck yeah. There we go, nice. Maybe come back and put a little like extra pigment in the bottom. Yeah, that's perfect. Cool. And let's see, I kind of stopped using um, apple trees all the time as like my default tree because it started reading to me as like Garden of Eden, like forbidden fruit tree. So now in my images, I differentiate between like Garden of Eden, apple fruit tree. And then if I'm painting like a more paradisical or like idyllic tree and I'll use an orange tree. It's a little symbology there for you. When I was looking up Mary symbols, like Virgin Mary symbols, oranges came up and I was like why and I tried digging into it so much and like basically just because oranges are nice they use it as a symbol for Virgin Mary so there you go man that was the perfect green color that was literally the exact color perfect okay wow someone says I mix paint with my brushes in nearly every episode wow shout me out bro shout me out. Yeah, I kind of do that. That's probably true, honestly. It's probably true. Um, okay, so now I got to think about what I want to do sky style. Uh, I kind of want to put in like a yellow sky, but I already have the yellow uh, halo going on. So I'm just going to drop some cobalt blue. I don't have my favorite blue right now, which is cerulean blue. It's a really, really nice green blue, but I'm kind of just embracing the fact that I have to use something different than what I normally use. Left to my own devices, I just use cerulean blue all the time, so I guess it's good to change it up sometimes. Cobalt blue is almost like lapis lazuli style, I guess you could say. Okay, I just wanna make sure I have no green on my brush when I lay this down. And let's see, I'm not gonna mix it with white. I wanna try and go like straight watercolor here. Yeah, it's just like a nice, like powerful blue. Come up here, get with the green a little bit. That's cool with me. I almost got a little bit of like a fairy tale vibe with the fox going on. I don't know if I should say that, ruin my street cred, but I do have a little bit of that vibe going on. Perfect, perfect. 
And I'm just gonna come in with the dry brush over here and get the blue going on. I don't know what kind of energy I'm going for down on the bottom. I'm probably gonna paint that in last. Let's see, that looks good. This looks awesome. I'm really feeling how this is coming out. I don't wanna get the green and blue, I mean the blue and yellow overlapping too much here. I'm just gonna get my finger, there you go, cool. Let's get it going. This is the best one in a while, TBH. Thanks, man. Yeah, we're getting better at, at what kind of style I should be laying down. Also, you can see like it's better if I'm just winging it, so. The Cardinal one last week was sick, though, honestly. I shouldn't be happy, hyping up another episode during this episode, but the Cardinal one was sick, but this one might be better. Might be better. Okay. And I don't know. Should I put the sun up top? I could get the sun going up top. I think I should just do it. And like the last like 30 minutes of the stream or so, I like to kind of just go for like whatever I think of and not really worry about how anything's gonna look. I think that's like really the way to go. So let's just do it. I could put in the orange sun up top. Yeah, let's do it. I'm just gonna go for it. I'm not gonna, oh, I already have orange out. Yeah, it has red in it though. Perfect, I'm gonna lay down this orange. And uh, yeah, I haven't been talking too much about the whole creative process thing. I've kind of just been going for it, letting you guys see what happens. But you can, if you've been watching the whole time, you can see what I mentioned at the beginning where sometimes it's good to just dig into uh, you know, the basic symbol set. Like sometimes I'm going through symbol dictionaries and I'm trying to find something new and like esoteric that I haven't used before. And sometimes I'm just back to the building blocks. I'm like, yeah, sun, moon, tree, plant, you know? It's good sometimes to get back to the uh, the basics, you could say. Uh, wow, great call department. That looks fucking awesome. And yeah, someone said the sun might clash with the halo. Yeah, that's why I made it orange instead of yellow. Maybe you intuited. Normally I would make it yellow, but I thought I would change it up. Um, even the color of the sun is something you can toy with a lot. The other week, man, the other week, it was like actually probably months ago, but I was driving to the doctor with my wife and we were go we go pretty far it doesn't really matter why we go pretty far though and you know we were watching the sunrise oh look at that i'm gonna dry the outside of the sun with my with my uh, napkin in a second so we go pretty far and uh there was sunrise and dude it was literally the most vaporwave thing i've ever seen in my entire life the sun was full on a pink luminous disc like I'd never seen it before, it was crazy. Like if you showed me a photo on your phone, I 100% would not have thought it was real. It was like a pink glowing disc, just like on like a Vaporwave album or something. And it was crazy. It's one of the most beautiful sunrises I ever saw in my life. I actually had no idea the sun could do that. Um, and since then I've been toying with uh, the color I make the sun in my artwork. Sometimes I've made it like red or other colors and things like that. That's something good if you're doing this kind of like illustrative, like symbolic painting. Um, it's good to just like always pause and check in with yourself and be like, wait, I don't have to actually make it that color. For me, that's the sky. I always am like, yeah, blue sky, fuck that. I'm gonna make it orange, I'm gonna make it teal, I'm gonna make it yellow. Um, but for anything, you know, as you're painting it in, you always wanna like stop and like check yourself and think like, oh wait, you know, actually, yeah, I do always make it this way, but I don't have to, there's no rule about it. And sometimes making those changes can work really well. Like I painted this guy drinking a cup of coffee and at the last minute I stopped and I didn't make the coffee brown. I made it this really dark blue color and with the dark blue sky, it looked, looked really good. Looks really good. Yeah, that looks really good. I'm feeling that messy sun. I'm gonna have to address it in some way, but I'm feeling the messy sun. I might make it red and then it'll balance out the fox on the bottom. That actually is what I'm gonna do. Perfect. And uh, it's gonna mix with the orange, but whatever, who cares? Let's see, do I want it to mix in? How much do I want it to mix in? Yeah, that's how I want it. That looks awesome. That looks awesome. Okay, um, what I'm thinking now is I kind of wanna get like some night coming in the bottom around the fox, but I really like how the fox looks. So I don't wanna get too messy around the fox, but at the same time, you know, you only live once and uh, I always say if you start worrying about ruining it, then it's game over. So I'm just gonna go for it. I'm just gonna paint in some black. Yes, let's just do it. And I, I'm gonna come back in with the water. 
This is a bold call, but I feel good about it. And I'll paint in some stars onto the black. I kind of wanted to give the fox a halo, honestly, but I don't know. Maybe I will. Maybe I won't. Whenever I give animals a halo, I think about that joke from The Simpsons where Flanders' kid was watching a show with a talking dog and then he turns it off and the mom says, he thought the idea of a talking dog was blasphemous. Because <laughs> I guess having an animal with a halo is kind of blasphemous, but I'm just a humble painter, so whatever. Okay, I want to get this loose. I want to get like looseness in here. And yeah, it's something else I've been playing with a lot of my images recently is the day night thing. Um, that's always like a factor in my artwork, but lately I've been kind of pumping it up a little bit. Okay, and let's see. Uh, I think the black has to like fade into another color here. So I'm going to fade it into another color. Maybe blue, maybe blue is the answer here. Oh, should I break out the ultramarine? Let's do it, we're breaking out the ultramarine. This is getting crazy now. We're fully, fully just flying. What's the word? Flying by the wind, wind flying. We're winging it. Okay, I'm just gonna throw down the straight ultramarine right now into the blue. See, I'm wondering, like I have to make a call right now, cause like literally right now, if I'm going to leave the area around the fox or if I'm gonna paint in and I kind of have to make that call right now, so I'm just gonna go for it and see what happens. I think it's gonna look hot. That looks pretty dope. I'm gonna paint out this black blue here. Yeah, that's what I want. I want that exact like dark blue indigo color. So it like reads as night without being so dark. That's what I'm going for right now up here. I want it to turn it's okay. Some of my paints just fell, but it's not a big deal. I want it to read as night, like have this like uh, kind of like smoggy color quality without actually being so dark. Let's come back in here, down here. Let's get a little bit of this blue. Oh, I love that the brown is not releasing into the blue. I'm so lucky right now. I actually don't know why it's not doing that. It must be something about that particular pigment, but really lucked out because if the legs were bleeding into the blue, I'd be totally fucked, but it's 100% not happening. I actually really don't know why. It's a Christmas miracle. Okay, cool. Okay, got a little paint on my gloves, but it's okay. And man, can you feel the tension in the air right now? Can you feel it? We didn't know if that was gonna look good or not. I did not know if it was gonna look good or not, but it actually looks dope. It actually looks dope. I'm getting a little paint on the bottom of the paper over here, but it's okay. I want to darken that up a little bit. Cool. Paint in the blue. Yeah. Wow. I feel very triumphant right now. I'm not going to lie. When I was doing that, I did not know if it was going to look good or not. And uh, I don't know if you could feel the tension. The box got knocked over. This is like extreme real life painting over here, but it actually looks sick and I'm really happy with how it looks. Cool. One day, one day we're gonna do a show and it's just gonna not, and it's just not, one of, we're gonna have a moment like that where it's like, oh shit, is this gonna come out good? And it's just not going to. And it'll be the first time I like completely fuck it up on camera, but that hasn't happened yet. I shouldn't jinx it. But it's inevitable that one time it will happen. It will happen one time. Okay. And when that happens, then we'll reevaluate. Then it'll be like, yeah, maybe I should start planning shit out. But for now, the winging it thing is working out spectacularly. I can only imagine the chat is going insane. Like, oh my God, it actually looked good. Oh my God, I'm using like Twitch emojis and shit. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, that came out sick. I'm very pleased with that. Okay, I gotta change my glove because I'm getting paint everywhere, but uh, that was awesome. Let me change my glove, let's see. Pen case, purple, so epic, dude. Fuck yeah, nice. Okay, I'm changing my gloves. If anyone wants to ask me anything, you can ask me something right now. Changing my gloves. Someone asked about pencil cases. Yeah, remind me at the end. I'll show you what I have. Um, I don't want to do it right now because uh, I got the momentum really hard right now and I feel like we're closing in, but 
Man, that was really intense. Honestly, I'm not gonna lie to you guys. I did not know if that was gonna look good or not. And I was thinking that I was about to totally bomb it on camera, but it actually looks awesome with the fox walking in and out of the darkness. Wow, that was an intense moment. I'm actually sweating right now. No lie, I'm like legit sweating right now because I was like, oh my God, I have to make this look good. I feel really good though. All right. You also, you also heard my paints fall all over the place, so it takes me a minute to find a particular color or something. That's why, but we're landing the plane. We're getting close to landing the plane, so should be all good. Um, there's pretty much pretty much one more call I have to make. Oh, I'll paint in the I'll paint in the oranges, and then there's really one more like big call I have to make. But we'll talk about that in a second. Um, if anyone has any questions for me, you can ask me. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep talking about what's going on here. I'm gonna paint in the oranges on the tree. Honestly, I feel like I should make them yellow though is the thing. And a lemon tree, is that like, I don't know. I don't know, should I make them yellow or orange? The problem is the real, the lemon yellow, well, I was gonna say actually the problem is that the lemon yellow is really see-through, but it's not a big deal actually. So we're just gonna go for it. I f I'm worried the orange is gonna be too much in the border. I really like the interplay of the warm and cool colors. I like how the red and orange and yellow is like poof, making this like channel in the center and then on the side we got the other colors. So I'm worried if I start putting in these really powerful orange circles as oranges on the side like the sun, it'll start to unbalance it. So I don't want to do that. So I'm going to see by putting in some. They're going to be like faint. Like maybe someone wouldn't really notice it, but they'll be there. They'll be there anyway. Got to have some fruit in the tree. Will there be 3D painting episodes in the future? Uh, you mean like virtual reality shit? Like that kind of 3D painting? Uh, if so, no. I have not done virtual reality yet. I told myself I would never do it. It just, oh shit, I got black in the fucking lemon yellow. Wow. But you can't even see it, it's not on camera. That's like the worst color to get in there. Let's make sure I don't do that. Um, I've never done the virtual reality like thing, if that's what you mean. Um, Kind of told myself I would never do it. I get like a really creepy feeling from it. And uh, I don't know, maybe I will eventually, but if that's what you mean, then no. If you mean something else, let me know. What's the name of the fox? Uh, you know what the name of this fox is? Um, man, I wish I could remember the name from mythology. It would be so clutch right now. There's a, uh, a really, really cool piece of pagan mythology. Um, yeah, I'll tell, I'll tell a little story right now. So if you're watching this far, I should reward you with some kind of story. I haven't been talking too much. I've just kind of been focused on making the picture, but now I have a little little moment too. Yeah, that lemon that lemon yellow is perfect. But I want it to be a little messier, so I'm going to water it down a little bit more. There's a really, really good piece of, of pagan mythology where uh, once you start knowing a lot of mythology, it sounds really pretentious, but it's my stream, so I'm just going to say it anyway. Whenever you start a story, you kind of have to decide like where to like jump into the story because like they all like bleed together, but... You guys might know Europa. She like gives the name to Europe. Um, you know, like Europa, like we joke about on Twitter, but Europa is like actually like a mythological thing. So I want to get it like a little messier. Yeah, there we go. That's nicer. There we go. Perfect. Get some tree, get some lemons in there. I'm actually just going to pick it up a little bit with the, uh, the napkin. So it's not so like, yeah, that's exactly how I want it to look. Perfect. So it's kind of just like subtle. It's like subtle in there. So basically like Europa gets taken to this island and she gets all this stuff. And one of the things she gets, I think it's from Zeus or something. I'm not so clear on this first part right now because I'm painting. Um, is this dog that always catches what it's hunting. And basically through a series of other myths, this dog gets given to uh, this hunter and he takes it out. And there's this famous fox in Greek mythology I want to say it starts with an L, like the Lycan 3 fox or something, but I forget what it is. But basically this fox can never be caught. So this guy has this dog that always catches what it's hunting, and there's this fox that can never be caught. So the guy releases the dog to catch the fox, and they're chasing each other, and they go on this like epic like run, and then one of the gods is watching it, and one of the gods is like, wow, this is really fucking weird. It makes no sense. We have to do something. So he takes that dog and that fox and makes them two constellations in the sky, and in Greek... Uh, astronomy there's a constellation like that it's that dog that can never be caught and the fox that always catches what it's hunting and they're together so that's what the fox is <laughs> just kidding but uh if you wanted an answer it's that fox but i forget its name all right oh yeah we're closing in here we're closing in on landing the plane 
It's an hour and 40 minutes. I always said I wanted this to be 90 minutes, but I think that ship is like firmly sailed. So last thing is something can go right here in like this cavity right here. And uh, I'm gonna put a lightning bolt in. I mentioned before that I'm kind of using like just the vibe symbols, um, just things that I feel like manifest the vibe and like energy that I'm going for. And the lightning bolt is a really good one. So we're gonna use that. I'm gonna paint it in straight cadmium, yellow. Perfect, it's right here. Really love the lightning bolt. Um, it's like kind of a symbol of like, just pure like energy manifesting. Um, it's like power and instantaneous. And I guess to me what the lightning bolt represents is, um, you know, not to go into like astrology. I'm not, I don't actually like subscribe to the astrology anymore in, a, in the classical sense, but it did form a large part of my like symbolic thinking. And like, it's a big part of like Western esoterica, whether or not you think the stars like actually affect us, like the symbolic framework of astrology is a big part of Western esoterica. Um, and I'm like uh, all fire signs. And I feel like an interesting aspect of symbols and symbolism is like ones that are ephemeral. You know, like you have the four elements, take it out of astrology world, people, people don't like astrology, but you have the four elements like earth, fire, air, and water. Fire is the only one that's ephemeral. You know, it's the only one that you start a fire, it has to go out, but water is not like that. Air is not like that. Earth isn't like that. Um, in fact, it's kind of the opposite with those. But conversely, fire is like super powerful. It can destroy, it can transmute, it can purify, it can do all kinds of things, things that the others can't. So in my mind, it's kind of like it gets that power in exchange for its ephemerality. Like there's a spectrum of like power versus time. You know, like a, a bonfire can transform things and destroy things and create things even. But conversely, if you light a bonfire, it's going to go out, right? Whereas a rock... A rock can live forever. A rock lasts forever. You know, it's not going anywhere. If you smash it up, it's still a rock. But conversely, the rock can't do anything. So when I'm using like certain esoterica symbols, they uh, they kind of operate on that framework. And for me, the lightning bolt is all the way on that one end of the spectrum where it can only last for literally like a singular instant. At the same time, though, it's almost more powerful than anything else. Lightning striking anything can pretty much destroy it. So I think about that like ephemerality a lot and how ephemerality kind of like implies power in a way. Even if you go through a list of symbols, you know, uh, we talked about Hokusai before, a wave, that giant wave crashing in front of Mount Fuji. A wave is incredibly powerful. Conversely, it's temporal. It only exists for a second and then it destroys itself. Actually, in that picture, perfect illustration. He probably thought of this too when he was making it. Conversely, a mountain's on the other end of the spectrum. Mountain, not doing anything, but it's going to be there forever. Um, I think about that, you know, in terms of myself in in a, in a way. Like I mentioned, I'm all fire signs. I don't. I never really think about that anymore, though. I just thought about that for this conversation. But just in general, you know, uh, I feel like I <laughs> I have that element. You know, I don't want to say that I'm ephemeral, but I am, I guess. I'm a human. Uh, but in exchange for that ephemerality, I have some power. So it's a trade you'd probably make if you could, you know. You want to be like a mountain or you want to be like a human, you know. You can live forever, but then you can't really do anything. That sucks. All right. So that was a good little, was a good little segue there. Okay, anyway. Um, damn, this looks fucking fresh, honestly. Um, last thing I'm going to put in, I feel like I just rolled up at the end. This looks dope. Um, is I'm going to put in some stars. I got to get just a few, maybe like four little white dots. So there's stars coming in. So it's like night coming in instead of just darkness. I want it to be like night coming in. Um, so that's what I'm going to do right now. If you want to ask me questions, start asking me questions. We're like landing the plane. If this is a plane, uh, you know, fasten your seatbelts because we're not like over the runway, but we're getting there. I'm just going to look and see what questions people ask me. Stuff with depth. Uh, oh, 3D painting like stuff with depth. Uh, yeah, eventually. I do want to do like a classical still life thing one time, but I got to get another camera or figure out how to use my phone so you guys can see what I'm painting. Um, but like bowl of fruit, stuff like that. Yeah, that's on the radar. Uh, I'm just going to plug again. There is a still life drawing tutorial on my website that you can do with any tools you have at home. And that'll take you really, really, really far, especially if you're quarantined. If you do that for an hour a day, dude, in like a week or two weeks or a month, you'll be blowing your own mind. That's a straight up guarantee. If you do the still life drawing tutorial for an hour a day, dude, you'll blow your own fucking mind 100%. Also, girls love it. I'm just going to plug it again. If you're a, you don't have a girlfriend or anything like that, dude, if you start use my still life drawing tutorial, you start drawing stuff, eventually some girl, wow, you drew that? 
What? That's so yeah yeah yeah. I have this I have this friend. I have a friend that uh yeah picked it up from him. But yeah, I like to I like to draw stuff. Trust me, man. I'm telling you, that's the move. Anyway, I'm just gonna get a few stars in here. See what other questions are going on. I bought your prints before. They're great quality, by the way. Thank you, Fishman. Five six seven eight. I like a song called I like a band called Fishman's. Actually, they're Japanese. Um, think about getting a few shirts. They tend to fit loose or tight. Uh, well, I wear a medium. I'm like six two and like kind of skinny. Um, I usually tell people to get the medium, but if you're jacked, then it's different. I someone I told to get the medium hit me up later and was like, yeah, I was actually too small because I'm like really jacked. Uh, so usually I tell people to get the medium. The large is like actually a large. It's like actually, it sounds stupid, but it's actually a large shirt. It's not just called that. Uh, so I say get the medium unless you think you need the large, but you can DM me on Twitter and I can give you the exact measurements and stuff. Or I think they're on the site too. You can just like lay it out with a ruler and compare it to one of your other shirts. Um, thanks for asking me that though. Let me plug my shit without, should I get an Urbit planet? Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to get an Urbit, uh, by trying, I mean, I just haven't done it yet, but I'm going to do that. So yeah, you should too. We can hang out there. Tree splitting rock image you posted was powerful. Yes, I was reading about omens and prophecy and stuff like that in this book from the 1500s I have. And the, the guy posted that right when I was reading it and I was like, that's an omen. That's If, if it was like 50,000 BC, we would definitely congregate around that and uh, probably like start a new religion or something, some pagan shit. Um, I'm going to put in the lemons again real quick here. They're a little faint and then we're probably going to wrap it up. So anything you want to ask me, do it now. Talk about, then we'll do a little wrap-up talk, and then we'll wrap this thing up. Uh, what I meant is, like, will you show us how to paint where there's a sense of depth? Yeah, 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 yeah. If you want to jump on that, that's, like, what the Still Life tutorial thing is about. But, yeah, I will do that eventually. Um, we'll do something like that. It's I. It's interesting because you say that, that everything so far has been pretty much 2D. That's true because I've been operating in a purely, like, symbolic idea-based space. You know, I'm kind of just painting things, like, how they look in my mind that makes sense. Um, but yeah, we'll do like a real painting thing at some point. Maybe next time. I'll think about it. I'll think about it. People are into it, I guess. That being you. Um, do you have any tips or advice for someone transitioning from the traditional drawing style to digital? Oh, dude. Yeah. It took me a long time to do that, man. Um, maybe it took me like a year or so. I was being really, really lazy at the time though. So I don't want that to discourage you. I'm sure if you put more like concrete effort into it, you could, you could have it go faster. I'll let these lemons dry while I'm talking and then I think we'll wrap it up at that point. I think this is looking really, really, really good. This is really awesome. Um, yeah, transitioning from digital to, uh, from, from, from analog to digital. Yeah, well the thing is, it just depends on how you wanna do it, man. Um, like when I'm working in Photoshop, I'm giving away a little bit of my mindset in Photoshop uh, here. I think of it like a silk screen, you know, there's layers. So I'm thinking of it on the layers and how I work into the layers. I only work in Photoshop. Um, so that helps me a lot. I'm thinking of it as like, if you've ever done silk screening before, if anyone hasn't done silk screening, you basically press the ink through these screens and like stack it up on these layers in your image. So if you were doing an image of like Garfield or something, you'd have uh, a screen that was just the shape of Garfield. Well, it's a rectangle screen, but the shape of Garfield would just be on it like an orange blob. You'd screen that, and then when it dried on the next sc screen, you'd have just the stripes, and you'd line it up and screen the stripes over. I think of my images in Photoshop like that because there's layers in Photoshop. I work in a very graphic way in there. Um, but other people uh, think of it more painterly, and they're kind of trying to recreate a painterly space in there. So honestly, yeah, man, it just depends on what you're going for. What I would do if I were you is watch a bunch of tutorials from different people. People have different tutorials on YouTube. Even if you don't like what they're making, you'll pick up little tricks and stuff like that. Um, it's a lot of practice. If you're using a tablet, like a Wacom tablet, um, big secret, don't go telling everyone this, but for you guys at school, if you tape a piece of paper over the drawing surface, then it feels like you're drawing on paper and makes it way easier. That's like a really, really big tip. Um, I don't know if other people do that. I just started doing it a long time ago and it really helped me out a lot. Um, mostly just watch tutorials and pick up little tricks from people and you'll get your own way of working. Um, one reason why I don't do Photoshop stuff on the stream is like everyone has such a particular way of working that if I do it, people could just copy my way of doing it. And I don't really care if people copy me, you know, I'm doing the painting, that's cool. But uh, I think it almost like hinders you in a way if you just see one person do it and copy them. So I would just watch a ton of tutorials and uh, you'll pick up tricks and stuff like that for sure, man. You can also hit me up on Twitter if you want to talk about it. Um, 
maybe a little moon down there. Oh, you're so right, but we're gonna do one picture without the moon. We're gonna do one picture without the moon. I think it might upset the balance. I could have put like a crescent moon here and a crescent moon here. Honestly, that would have been kind of hot, but we're gonna get one picture without the moon. I want it to be like solar. We're going like positive imagery. The moon has like a different kind of connotation. So um, let's see. Can I buy this painting, LOL? I wanted to give it to my sister. <laughs> yeah, if you want, hit me up, man. I don't really know what I'm gonna do with the paintings that I uh, do on the stream. There's a little bit of blue paint smudged down here, but I could cut it right here. Yeah, if you want, hit me up on Twitter. We could talk about that for sure. Um, okay, otherwise, we're right on time. It's 1.50. I'll keep an eye out if anyone wants to ask me more questions, but I think we're gonna wrap it up right now. Um, this is really awesome. Uh, I mean, I'm saying my own art's awesome. I should say, I'm very happy with how this turned out. That's how I should say it. I'm very happy with how this turned out. Um, I, you know, I'll just kind of go over what, what, what the vibe is and then we'll wrap it up. Um, you can see what I'm going for when I'm doing these kind of like live things where I don't know what's going to happen and I'm kind of just talking to you guys and you're kind of seeing it manifest in real time. Um, like I said at the beginning, I had some idea for some picture with like two birds on this you know, power line outside my house with the moon, but that would have been like 10 million times less cool than this. And actually what happened was like a perfect illustration of what I talked about at the beginning, where if some virtual image exists in my mind already and I'm trying to copy it, then it's gonna be just this really stale, like copy of a thing in my brain. But by just winging it, I think it has a very like fresh, spontaneous quality. And I talked about it on Twitter a little bit, but you can kind of tap into this, um, I, I call it the like primordial, source of like human creativity um in certain occult texts and like i should say like esoterica from a long time ago they would call it the imagination of nature i think of it as more more of like a theological and divine sense but there is this like part of your brain that's like hooked into the creative like power of the universe that you can just really like tap into not that like my picture is some like ultimate manifestation of that but uh, I really do think that, I think musicians are more familiar with it when you pick up an instrument and enter this like non-verbal headspace and just start like jamming out and it kind of just like comes from like deep inside you. Um, and tapping into that is really kind of why I wanted to do the streams and do this kind of thing, you know, encourage more people to be creative and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm really into it. Uh, I think we landed right where I mentioned on kind of like an inversion of the skeleton symbol. Skeleton is like a positive uh, symbol. I was thinking of the black rabbit and the fox kind of like playing into that also. Um, you know, the fox catches the rabbit, but neither of them are like bad or evil. It's just kind of like how it is. The black rabbit kind of has like a shadowy presence, but kind of like death, kind of like the skeleton. But um, there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just part of life. Skeleton, your body, muscles, the lungs. I like the really pink, fresh, like healthy looking lungs. Um, night kind of creeping in, but I mentioned the story with the moon and that saint and stuff. Night's not like an evil thing. God made night. There's nothing really wrong with it. It's just symbolic of like different things sometimes in a certain human circumstances, but yeah, kind of an inversion of the normal death and skull symbol. And I'm like really happy with how it turned out. Uh, any last questions? It's just like modal music. Yeah, it is true. Actually, I'm not going to go into that right now though. Nice. Um, cool. If you watch this whole thing or if you, even if you just watch part of it, thanks for coming through and checking it out. Um, this is a really cool one. I really love doing this for people. I think people are into it. Uh, if you want to hit me up and let me know what you think of the stream so far, I'm just kind of in my studio, talking to my computer and reading the chat. So I think it's going well, but you would know more than me because you're watching it, not doing it. So if you want to hit me up and let me know how it's going or, you know, if you think you notice something maybe I didn't notice, like, oh, oh, and there's this like thing on the side of the screen or whatever. Uh, or if you just want to tell me you like it, that's cool too. Um, otherwise, guys, that's really it. Uh, they're only getting better. The streams are only getting way better. We've come a long way already. It's only been like 10 episodes um, and we're already like crushing it out from where we started. So who knows? how far the rocket can go, rockets are fake, how far the plane can go, just kidding, off into the distance. Um, so thanks for being here, thanks for watching it. And yeah guys, hit me up on Twitter or I'll catch you, uh, I'll catch you on the internet where we all hang out together. Hope you have a great rest of your evening. Thanks guys, see ya.